Hi and welcome back to Swapnil Kitchen and Lifestyle. I'm Swapnil and today I am in Egypt. This is Merit Papyrus. It's an institute and a shop where we get to know a lot about papyrus paper. How is it made? It's handmade paper and how it is hand painted. This place is at 51 Pyramid Giza, Cairo. Let's check it out. Videos allowed. Videos allowed. We are fitting just behind. Okay, thank you. Well, hi. Hello. Let's see. Where are you from first? India. Sure. You're Indian? Yeah, no. You look more Egyptian than me. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I thought you speak Arabic at the beginning when you just come. I thought you were a guy. Then she's like, well. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, before we start, what would you like to do? That's your moment. We have everything like tea, coffee, water, hibiscus juice, orange juice, coke, Sprite, Seven Up, Seven Down. <laughs> I would like to try hibiscus juice. Hibiscus? Yeah, same. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sir. Hibiscus. And hibiscus? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Alba uh, yeah. hibiscus. Alba uh, kakadi. All right. So now. Uh, I'm going to give you first a brief idea about this plant, the papyrus plant, and how the paper was made exactly the way the ancient Egyptians did thousands of years ago. Uh, actually, the plant itself was considered as a holy plant. So the, the ancient Egyptians used to worship this plant in the ancient days before even thinking of making the paper. And that's because of three main things. The first thing is, the plant itself was considered like the flag of the north of Egypt. You know, Egypt was completely two different kingdoms in ancient days. The papyrus plant was the flag of the north. The lotus flower was the flag of the south. The second reason it's the flower, which should be much bigger than this. It looks a bit like the sun rays. You know, the ancient Egyptians used to worship the sun in ancient times. So the sun rays was the symbol of Amun-Ra, the god of sun in the ancient days. And the main thing is, and that's the main difference between this plant and any other, this is the only plant all over which has this triangular stem. All the other plants are round, but this is the only one which is triangular. It looks exactly like one face of the pyramid. The pyramid was the symbol of eternity in ancient days. So for the sun and the pyramid and the flag of the north, the ancient Egyptians used to worship this plant. So it wasn't just a plant, actually. To make the paper itself, first thing we do is just we decide the size we need. The plant grows over four meters, by the way, but in the same time, it needs two things to grow. Very hot weather, really hot, actually. Lots of water in the same time. So the plant should be even much thicker than this. So we just decide just a little small one like this, for example. And then we remove the outer green skin. This part is quite strong and it's very flexible as well. In the ancient days, they used it for making things like ropes, hats, baskets, sandals, and so on. So they didn't even throw this part away like the way we do now, of course. This is the main part we use for making the paper. We just divide it into slices, just like this. But now you see it's actually so fragile, just because the slices contain lots of water, sugar, and also fibers inside. That's why it's so brittle. To make the slices flexible, yeah. we have to squeeze the water out by using the rolling pin. Yeah. We also break the fibers inside the slices, just like this. <laughs> Every woman uses this nowadays, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Must be heating as well if it comes late. It's universal. Anyway, you're not married yet. Are you married? You're married to him. Oh, you're married to the Egyptian? Yeah. Oh my God, I'll give you this. <laughs> but you know what? Egyptian wife never uses this. Egyptian wife is the only wife she never used any of these when, she, when the husband comes late. You know what she uses? No. Knives. <laughs> you know, you come late once, she's going to send you to heaven. <laughs> so now you can see that it's much flexible and stronger than yeah. before. And then we soak the slices in the water here for two days to reduce the sugar. We have to change the water every day. Only two days just to get this light color. Only this. If we lift the slices longer time in the water, like 10, 15 days, 
it gets that dark brown shape. So the, it looks exactly like the wood itself. The dark paper, it's the same thing, the same quality, but it takes longer time to do the paper, much hard to paint in it. So it needs professional and patient artist, actually. After the time in the water, we arrange the slices in horizontal and vertical positions between two pieces of carpet like this or two pieces of cotton. Of course, the ancient Egyptians didn't have the same materials we use now. They used animal skins in the beginning, like camel hides. Later, they used the linen as well. So you can weave the slices, you can also flat them. It's okay, but it should be, and this is the main point, by the way, it should be horizontal and vertical. That's what makes the paper strong enough. Because the Egyptians themselves, when they first made the paper, they used to do the slices one line. Mm. It's okay, but they found out that it's easier to tear and easier to break. That's So they didn't need this. They needed something to last. That's why they made it this way. And you will see how strong the paper is. And so on, and so on, until we complete the whole sheet. And then we squeeze everything under this press here for six days. This is the only different thing, by the way. The ancient Egyptians used instead heavy stones or heavy rocks, actually. During the six days under the press, the slices going to stick together. Naturally, that's because of the cellulose inside the fibers. That acts like a natural glue. No chemical materials, no nothing, not even machines. The method is still the, th the same thing the ancient Egyptians did. And then we get a piece of paper exactly like this. This is the first paper ever invented by mankind. Until this moment, by the way, and this is the amazing thing. Until this moment, it's still the strongest kind of paper ever invented until now. Well, it lasts thousands of years under all conditions, hot, humid, cold, doesn't matter. Except any type of colors, any. That's like oil colors, watercolor, ink, acrylic, pastel, whatever. The paper itself is quite strong. It's very flexible and very smooth, as you see. That's why this was the biggest industry in, in, in ancient days, by the way. Like it's a, Nowadays, it's a paper. We do have lots of different kinds of paper. That's why we look at it as a, as a paper. But in that time, there was no paper. But everything you do, you have to dig it in the stone. Your daily life, you have to dig this in the wall. Your message, you have to dig this in the stone. That's hard work, actually. Yes. So after the paper, of course, it's like technology. <laughs> so you paint everything you do. Again, as the light, you can see the horizontal and vertical yeah. arrangement. And that what makes the paper that strong, by the way. So the paper itself was, in that time, of course, was considered as a royal paper. So imagine now, like, if you have the gold on one scale and the other scale you have the, 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 the paper, you can take the gold. That's okay. It's not that important. But don't think, don't imagine to touch the paper. Only main people, they can touch it. The rest, no. Can you imagine this? Manuscript. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's a paper, but, well, it's It was so... even gifted. Could have been... Like, um, in a, like, highly do diplomatic places, it was gifted. Uh-huh, that's yeah. right, yeah, that's right. That's why, that's, it was easier even to send, send messages, you know, yes. like, instead of, you know, imagine yeah. if you get a message, and this is a message, can you believe this? <laughs> so, oh, message yeah, in ancient yeah, days yeah. wasn't just some letters you write, and that's it, and tiny, no, it was a huge thing, like that, and there's bigger than this, actually. Mm -hmm. So, this is about the paper. Now, have you been to the Egyptian Museum or not yet? No, no. not yet. Okay. So I will explain for you some of the top stories of all the Egyptian history, by the way. Some of them you will see in Egypt and some others not. Like they are still in different museums around the world. One of them is this. This is the, the, the Judgment Day or the Wave of the Heart. This is the most famous story in all the Egyptian history. It's a message to remind people to do good in this life. This is the main thing about this message. So they told people the everyone will be judged. So the ancient Egyptians wanted people to do good. So what did they say to do good? Like, you're going to be judged. I'm going to judge you. Like, you have to do good. That's it. So this is the most famous message and the most famous story in all the Egyptian history. The original one of this, it's the one we have in the British Museum in London until now. Painted on the same paper, by the way, more or less 4,000 years ago. And that's still perfect, intact. The colors and the, pa and, and the paper too. Uh, so let's get your drink first. Thank you. Here. 
So first, you see the disease. He's giving the offerings to 14 jurors. They ask him what he has done during his life. They ask him 120 questions about his lifetime. He is kneeling down, lifting his hands. He swears he didn't do nothing bad. That's like everybody <laughs> in this case, of course. Like we will not, we all want to pass. But here he needs the majority of the jurors. You know, like if it's 50 plus one, that's gonna be perfect for him. And that's exactly what we do in elections, for example. So those people, they did the 50 plus one before we do. The voting system itself, they did this thousands of years before we do. Here you see, only seven of them are raising the key of life, right? Those with the key of life, they voted for him. The others did it. But still, seven and seven, yes, no, yes, no, it doesn't work. So when it reaches to the half, they have to make sure. Maybe he says the truth, but maybe he lies. Yeah. You, you can't take a decision. That's why they sent him down here to make sure. They give him another chance, and that's his right. But <clears throat> no more talk. It's time to check out the heart itself. So you can do nothing, you can't talk, you can't you can control nothing. Your heart will prove whether you were lying or telling the truth in the top. So they will check out the heart. Here, Anubis, the god of mummification and medicine in ancient days, is leading him as he sees to the balance of justice, weighing his heart against the feather of justice and truth. In the ancient days, if you look at the mummies, they used to take everything away. Yes. They used to leave just the heart inside. They believed everything we do in this life, good, bad, whatever, goes to the heart. The only thing that makes the heart heavy, it's the bad deeds. So if his heart was heavier than the feather of truth, that means he was lying. He did bad during his life. Here, this is Sobek or Am Am, that's the god of punishment. In the ancient days, we'll punish him by eating the heart. Eating his heart, it's symbolic, by the way. It means this person will just disappear. No heaven, no afterlife, no nothing. He's done. That's the biggest punishment. By the way, from Am Am came the word Yam Yam, we say nowadays. That's the source. That's true, by the way. This is the source of the word Yam Yam, eating. Yeah. Yeah. So here, the feather of truth was heavier. That means he was good. If it's equal, even in here, in this case, remember, he can do nothing about it. It's, if it's equal, no more decisions he can take. So that means you did your best. So they just forgive him if it's equal. And then he passes with Horus. Horus was the god of protection, sky, and sun as well. That's why from Horus came the word horoscope, by the way. Okay. Yeah, that's the one. So here, Horus is introducing him to his father, Osiris. This is the big judge, the god of the afterlife. He is watching everything going on on the court. Behind him, two ladies, they assist him. His wife, Isis, the goddess of love, justice, peace, and fertility. His sister, Nephthys, the goddess of magic in the ancient days, they are all welcoming him to the heaven. That's why you can see the ladies kindly, they weave to heaven. Here for the first time you see the four kings of Horus above the two flags. The lotus flower, the symbol of love, and upper Egypt. Papyrus plant, that's peace, of lower Egypt. Together, are coming from one way, the river Nile. That's the symbol of eternity in ancient days. This part is the unity between the upper and lower Egypt. Up here in the top, the eye of Horus, the eye of uh, protection, and again is the envy. Wings and feather, that's truth and justice in ancient time. Final thing we have in this court, as usual, you know there must be someone in the court recording everything going on. So this is here God Thoth, or Tat. This is the God of knowledge in ancient days. He is the one who records everything going on, the questions, the answers, whatever. Still, the same thing we do. Here, the story is written down in details in hieroglyphics, and that also comes with the description in English too. That's number one. The, se the second famous one is this. This is amazing too, by the way. This is the first and the oldest caterpillar ever invented by mankind. That's what I'm telling you. Those people, they didn't have the technology we have now, but they had technology in another way. That a temple, that's a luxury. It was the ceiling itself of the temple. It was actually made in the ceiling, not painted in the ceiling. So, the original one right now, it's in the Louvre Museum in Paris. So here you see, four couples of horse representing the four cardinal points. That's north, south, east, and west. Four ladies. They are the four seasons of the year. If you count the people together, they are 12. That's the 12 months of the year. If you count the arms, they are all 24 arms, 24 hours mm. of the day. Inside, 52 figures. They are the 52 weeks in the whole year. 
in the center, you can see easily everybody's star signs like Capricorn, Sagittarius, Scorpion, wow. Libra, Lion, Cancer. We're talking about 3,500 years ago. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, yes. Unbelievable, really. This is what makes all the world they study this uh, story like crazy about it. Like, what, what secret they had in this? Final thing we have is you know what? I want to do this. Huh. Ready? You're going to hold this. Okay. All right, this is very important. You're going to come this way. She's next to the queen, you're next to the king. All right? This is the marriage. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, for her, everything she does is perfect. For you, you have to look at the king, what exactly he does, because this is the main point. So this is the first marriage card, and actually consider marriage, marriage card, marriage contract, marriage anniversary in the same time. So this is Tutankhamun and his wife. They are sharing love together, as you see, by exchanging the lotus flower and the papyrus plant. Papyrus is peace. Lotus, lotus is love. So in ancient days, if you want to say I love you, you have to tell the word. In the ancient days, they didn't have to say the word, but they used to give the lotus flower, and it depends how many flowers you get. One flower is enough to say I love you, but if you want to say I love you so much, or I love you a lot, how? If you want to prove that, you have to get more flowers to give it to the one you love. That's why the wife, she's not giving one flower, she's giving a bunch. And that says exactly, I love you a lot. Right? Now, the husband keeps touching the flowers, looks, looks to her eyes and so on. This is like eye contact and sharing love and so on, romantic in a way. But he must get the flower in a special way. All right, she will give you the flower now. I will help you, don't worry. <laughs> she will give you the flower. You have to get it from him. How are you going to get it? Look at the piece. Okay, look at that, and then do what the king does. All right, so now you can use your hand and get the flower. Yeah, go on. You're perfect. <laughs> get it. Oh, you're smart. That's it. Get it close to your heart. That's it. She's telling you, I love you now. Right? Now you're getting the flowers using the left hand. The left hand is closer to the heart. This oh. is how you say, I love you too. Like, oh. if you give that to the right hand, you're in trouble. Oh. <laughs> he's, nice. he's so sorry. He loves you. <laughs> so here in the top, you can see, see these two little things up there, written inside, right? So the cartouche is exactly the wedding ring nowadays. It's a circle, has no end, and has the names of the husband and wife. But in this one in particular, you can see the name of the husband not next to him, but it's next to her. That's the opposite. You know, like, not like the rest of the stories. And, you know, that's love, endless. You know, that's it. So we do this nowadays. We can paint the names too, like people names. These are the most famous stories. Around you, you'll see many figures. Each one of them tells a story behind. They don't come in one size, by the way. Like, everything comes in smaller size, uh, smaller than this, medium, and so on. So each painting you see tells two numbers. In the order code number, tell the either price in Egyptian. Here is a government place, so we accept almost everything. So no tax, no extra charge. Only if you will put the names, this is going to be extra little bit for the artist. Put the names inside the cartoon. And there. how much time will it take? Like five minutes. That's like it. because he will paint the artist paints the cartouches and fill it with the background and then puts the names and hieroglyphics inside it. So that's like five 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 Egyptian minutes only. Okay. Don't be worried. Like five minutes. <laughs> five Egyptian minutes. I know one minute like one day in India. I know that <laughs> Egyptian minute is too long. <laughs> so now we look around. Enjoy your time. Yeah. Ask me any question you want. So I will help you with that. Yeah, you are fabulous, by the way. Oh, hey. thank you so Very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks yeah. a lot. There's thank still a lot you. to see and a lot to ask about. So enjoy, yeah. Thank and you. Congratulations. Huh? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Okay, I'll bring the other one too, so to be able to see all the things together. You'll have to help me. <laughs> This is only one piece. 
it's a long way more. There's also, this is the honeymoon, this is Tutankhamun, 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 Tutankhamun shedding blood. You can see she's holding something in her hand, right? Mm -hmm. she, that's oil. And she's massaging his left shoulder. That's closer to the heart. They are shading one pair of sandals down there. That's oh. like shading love. And then at the same time, the Ra, the god of sun and ancient dame, blessing them by giving them the hands and the keys, you know? So this is the marriage in different colors. This is another view of the honeymoon, which is the hunting scene of King Tut. Real paintings. The tomb of papyrus, too. So they yeah. all are one but papyrus? That's oil of papyrus. And you can see that um, right here, for example. One of them. Oh. Yeah, this is hard work too. I hope you like this video. That's all for the day. All the videos of Egypt are in the playlist with a folder named Egypt. So you can check out all the videos which will be coming up and all the uploaded ones. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel and see you in the next video. Take care.